What is up, Thrashers? Welcome back to the Thrash Maniac 99 YouTube channel, and we are back for episode 5, 5, 5, 5, 5 of the Horseman Podcast. And we've got a very good episode set for you today, but of course, before we get started, joining me as always are three of the other four horsemen of the show. Raphael Fireblade couldn't be here, but he's here in spirit as always. But uh, go around, please welcome Artur Felipe Castanha. How's it going? We've got Ricky, aka Horror Master. Hello. And then last, but certainly not least, the wonderful Hannah Klein. <laughs> Ooh! Yeah. Oh. And, of course, yours truly, Levi, a.k.a. ThrashMayac99. Uh, if you don't know, you why are you here? <laughs> you should have done that in, like, a black metal voice. Oh, God. If I did a black metal, I'd probably scare everyone in the house. I can do the grouse because it's not so loud. But, um... Uh, <clears throat> but, yeah, it's, and funny enough... The hint was given out when I just growled. This week's episode is our top ten favorite death metal vocalists of all time. Oh, this is one of the hardest ones I had to work on considering death metal is one of the nearest, dearest genres to my heart next to thrash metal. And this was the hardest list I've had to make by far. And there's so many that I missed out on that barely missed even the honorable mentions cut. And speaking of honorable mentions, we're going to go round table discussing our honorable mentions, and we're going to kick things off with mm -hmm. Ricky. All right. My honorable mention, I just have one. And it's um, Angela Gossel from Rich Enemy. Mm. I He's always thought about her on the list. She's on my yeah. list. Um, I, I was thinking there's not many women represented in the death metal scene. Yeah. I, had to, I had to give her because, you know, she can fucking sing better than most males can. I mean, even though she's no longer in the band, technically she is. I think she's, like, manager. manager yeah. you, know, you know how many women? But uh, I'm spoiling a little bit because she's on my uh, list. Yeah, yeah, but I think, I think they, should, they should give them a credit because, you know, her, the growl that she does, a bit. I want. I want to take a bath. It's pretty high, and I, I. I was gonna put on my 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 list, but uh, ah, it was so difficult because I had to choose between her and somebody else. But yeah, I don't mention I'm like also from my yeah, I thought about either putting her and also Alisa on my honorable mentions, because I like Alisa's voice, too. Even though, growling-wise, she's not as good as Angela, I will say she's got a very good, clean voice, too. But mm -hmm. aside from that, uh, all right, I got uh, five honorable mentions. This goes to show you how I love death metal vocalists. <laughs> so kick things off, I got for my first honorable mention, Jeff Walker from Carcass. Oh yeah. After all, I love I love his approach to death metal or extreme metal vocals with almost black metal to an extent because it's more raspy than a lot of other death metal vocalists, and I really like that. It sounds like if especially Tom Angel, early, especially in the early phases, symphonies yeah. of sickness, of putrefaction, and such. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say, and Jeff Walker to me sounds like if Tom Angel Ripper's voice was lower. That, that's what he reminds me of. Um, next up, I got, uh, spoiler alert, no Chris Barnes on my list. Maybe back in, back in, maybe if I was alive in this age in, like, 95, he maybe would have made my list, but since he's gotten worse, nah. So instead, I got Corpse Grinder as my next honorable mention. Not just for his work in Cannibal, but Monstrosity. His work in Monstrosity, quite underrated. Um... Next up, uh, Dallas Toller Wade, formerly of Nile. I love his approach, where he sounds really growly. Him and Carl, that combination. I could have put Carl Sanders on my list, but I Both went with Dallas. Both of them are on my list and are quite high. Both of them are on my list and quite high. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, next up, uh, David Vincent, formerly of Morbid Angel. Um... Especially his early stuff, like from Altars of Madness through to Covenant, I really like, uh, really liked his voice. Especially 
back in the days when I watched like some live stuff from him in the 90s, I always thought he sounded better live than studio from what I've heard, so that's an added bonus for him. And then my final honorable mention, my favorite musician of all time in metal, Dan Swano. Love Dan Swano's growl. I give I give my honorable list. I give my my one of my mentions to honorable list as well. Dan Swallow was let Dan Swallow too. Well, since uh, you mm-hmm. mentioned it, your honorable mentions are tour. So, um, <laughs> mine already. Uh, I I, I kind of have four, maybe five as well. But uh, I start off as I said with Dan Swallow, just to give some love to. Just to give some love as well to you, Levi. I haven't listened that much of uh, of his stuff, but sure as hell I will. I have Thomas Lindbergh from At the Gate, one of the founders of the Swedish death metal scene, and his voice is still good even after all these years, after all the projects that he has yeah. headlined, including the Haunted and, <laughs> so many, and so many others. I have, and this might be a bit <clears throat> a bit controversial to me, but. My list does it includes a bit of old school and also sub sub genres of death metal. One of those on my honorable list that easily go on my list, Johan Heck from Amona Marth. I mean, yeah, Amona Marth widely recognized worldwide. His voice sounds like a bit death metal, but you could still understand all the lyrics and stuff, and also his posture on stage. Then again, he's a almost a six foot two, speed, so. Plus, not to mention, one of the best beards in metal. <laughs> I wish I had that. And also bring a horn full of meat as well. <laughs> and if you, if you do, he toasts with you. I've, I've done that myself when he came to the tour. And the last one, one of two Polish that are on my list, Piotr Wieskrakek from Vader. I mean, Piotr from Vader, I mean... We are going to mention the other Polish, possibly on, on this list. But Piotr from Vader is like matured at a great rate. And Vader, um, no matter how many changes has done uh, throughout, it has still remained one of the powerhouses of European death metal. And I could say a bit on my <coughs> honorable uh, fifth, which kind of is a last minute edition, but just as, as you said. Jeff Walker, too. Yeah. I thought about putting a couple of different uh, Polish vocalists. The one that I was really aiming for was uh, Sauron from Decapitated. I yeah. thought about putting him on my list. Uh, but now, Hannah, your honorable mentions. I also have Johan Heck from I'm on a Moth on my list. It uh, was the first kind of death metal band I listened to. I still love them. I think they will never reach... Fired of the Thunder Girls again, but still an amazing life band. Love his voice. Um, then I also have um, David Vincent from Morbid Angel on here. Um, saw them, re- saw him recently with I Am Morbid. Was a great show. Um, and then my third honorable mention goes to Daniel Droste from the German Funeral. Yes, I don't know band Ahab. Ah, oh, hey, yep. Yeah. Love his voice. Lo- lo- I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of funeral, dude, but I love Ahab, and they are great. I guys. even thought I even thought of putting uh, Nick Holmes from Paradise Lost and Bloodbath in here as well, but I would be more just for his recent work with Bloodbath, not so much with Paradise yep. Lost. Early Paradise Lost. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say more if I would have. Yeah, I was going to say, if I was going to put Nick Holmes on my list, it would have been for early Paradise Lost <laughs> for me. Current bloodbath. Well, he is on my list. <laughs> Alrighty, well... Uh, is also on mine. Well, I could start with my number 10 and you will hear it. <laughs> Alright, well, now we're going to get into the actual lists, and Hannah, you can go ahead and get started. Uh, well, my number 10 is Nick Holmes. Whoa! Uh, uh, that's, that's why I said that, and the reason why he is on here is not not so much because of Paradise Lost, but because I really, really love the latest Bloodbath record, and I saw him him, him live, and I will see him live in two weeks, I think, and 
I just, it's, for me, it just works. Nick Holmes with Paradise Lost, of course, he isn't as good, in my opinion, as Michael Ackerfeld, but he still has a great death metal, metal um, voice. Yep. Alrighty. Uh, um, Artur, you're number 10. That might be a bit uh, outside the box, but for a person that has worked with so many bands and has had time to launch two side projects, both of them, one of them death metal, the other one not so much, Peter Taggerton from uh, Hypocrisy. I mean, he may be one of the shortest guys you'll ever meet, but he is a hard worker. He has produced most black metal, most black metal albums as that you can think of from the Mobile Gear, Cradle, Marduk, many others in the Abyss Studios that he, that he owns. And he still had time to release a bunch of different albums with arguably one of the best European death metal bands, Hypocrisy. I mean, it may be a bit sci-fi with all the, the themes that he has, yeah. but it just works. And he's still touring to this day. More, maybe more or half and half with pain is more industrial goth, goth industrial side project but still if you hear him live whether it's with eraser roswell 47 end of disclosure or fire in the sky any other of his classical songs peter taggerton is still one of the best yeah i'm hoping we get a hypocrisy album coming down the pike soon <laughs> all right uh, my number 10 well Again, shirt spoils all. <laughs> I, I just, I, I'm going to keep plugging this band until they get some more fans, but uh, the late great Joe, oh the late great Joe Fichek is my number 10 because he, along with uh, another guy on my list, Chris Barnes, and maybe a couple others, pioneered the brutal death metal vocal style. However, the difference is that Joe's, like I even said in the last episode, like his voice sounded so disgusting. Sounded like he was literally vomiting while recording. After all, they, his, his nickname was the esophagus. <clears throat> in my impression of his voice, it was like something like... <clears throat> something like that. Like it's so... It just sounds so gross, but it's perfect. Uh, it's a shame he's no longer with us. He's been gone for about eight years, and... From stories I heard, he was originally going to reform Broken Hope two years before they actually did, until he ended up taking his own life, which is a shame because he's he was a unique vocalist for the time that's very underrated and doesn't get a whole lot of credit. Ricky, you're number ten. My number ten is one the only Chris Barnes. Hmm? Now, I get it. Kind of course, is in my favorite just metal that I've done. It's like one of my least favorite just one of them all time. But the influence that Chris Barnes created to the death metal is very important. I mean, I might be a, a, a bit of a more club grinder, man, but Chris Barnes to me was, I don't want to say the, the vocalists that made death metal mainstream because they, they didn't, but. I guess they got more tension because, you know, they they, they show up in a Ventura, first show up new in the new sports, you know. This influence is so huge that inspired me to get the Apocalypse long after he was in Cannibal Corpse. Then we get to Six Feet Under, which is a whole different story. Yeah, <laughs> a completely different story. <laughs> mm hmm so, Yeah, Chris Barnes, my number 10. Yeah, and I was—I almost forgot to mention with uh, Joe is that even since the band's back together and their new vocalist Damian Linsky, who was also in Gorgasm before joining Broken Up, even he's uh, pretty solid. Even though I prefer Joe's because his was a lot more brutal. But now we get to our number nines, and I'll kickstart this one off with another brutal death metal vocalist, the one and only Lord Worm, formerly of Cryptopsy. I mean, I think one of the commenters on that Brutal Death Metal episode said best, when you listen to Nun So Vile, he literally sounds like a damn junkyard dog that's getting ready to eat your body alive. <laughs> like, 
I don't know what else to describe his voice, especially not, not only with the lows, but the highs he does are quite disgusting sounding. And after all, I've loved that album, None So Violent. And even though he's done an album since then, I kind of wish he'd be back in the band because their uh, current singer, Matt, not really feeling him that much. So it's just hard to it's just hard to replace a legend like Lord Worm, in my opinion. But Lord Worm, awesome. Uh, Artur, your number nine. My number nine will will go towards more the melodic side, but then again, like I said, not a big. I, and I forgot one more uh, role mention. Seth from Septic Flesh. I mean, his voice is just, is just awesome. But my number nine, Dark Tranquility's Nicholas Stunde. I mean, it's melodic death metal. We we all know about it, but. Just like the one heck who can sing from a, 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 a normal pace to a more death metal sound, I mean, it's just awesome. And it, being doing uh, Dark Tranquility is one of those bands that universally you can agree they're one of the masters of the melodic style. It's, it's, their latest song, Matoma, is one of the proofs of it. And even live, playing all the classics, whether it's the Mundane of the Magic, Terminus, where death is most alive, Misery Crown, and many others. He's still as good life as he is, as he is in studio. So, number nine, from Dark True Quality, Nicholas Stanley. Plus, it's hard to imagine that he was the original vocalist for Hammerfall, too. Which is really interesting. Alright, oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> all right, Ricky. He has a good voice for that as well, too. Yeah. Alright, Ricky, you're number nine. Well, keeping it with the kind of corpse theme, my number nine is Corpse Rider. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could say kind of course one of my least favorite death metal bands, so I had to get them out of the way first. But again, I kind of corpse grinder it has no fucking neck. I mean, or it's just so a much. thick neck, it's just the biggest neck of them all. I know, but I know. And you almost and think you almost think that you're gonna chop down a tree. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a fucking orc. Hey, <laughs> orcs are cool. Yeah, yeah, but... like yeah. Well, he does play in the uh, horde side on World of Warcraft, and they have orcs. <laughs> yeah, but thank you. Pure respect. Here's another Diablo player, Ink Van Malmsteen. <laughs> Same thing as ever with Fritz Barnes, but a bit more Corpse Grinder. I'm like a more Corpse Grinder fan up to the Corpse Grinder era. And I don't know, something about. And I've tried to say like he does. I can. I've tried it. I can. He just fucking gets my whole neck. <laughs> so? I can't, I can't sing the way he can. I can. I've tried it. I tried it. I end up. <laughs> Maybe his vocal cords are like that thick or something. Oh like god, that. I couldn't imagine. <laughs> well, he said yeah, it himself right. that the reason his neck's that thick is because of the years of head circle head banging on stage. Yeah. So, I guess it built his head neck head muscles up. And, I, and yeah. I've heard that he had surgery, but he still had bang and he still windmills like a crazy guy. Yeah, but total Coast respect Rider, to Corpse Rider for that Coast too. Corpse Rider, Corpse Rider than me. Scared the shit out of me when it started using Cannibal Corpse more than Chris Barnes. To the point that I stopped listening to Cannibal Corpse for a good while. So I was a <laughs> That's it. That's the impact that Corpse Grinder has on me. That he's mm. gonna live in hell out of me. Not now. Not now. <laughs> but back then, that's when I was like 13, 14. For discovering Death Bed on Black Metal. I thought I was like, fucking like, oh shit. I'm gonna hell for this. Also worth mentioning, Corpse Grinder, I feel, is a very underrated animated voice actor. Not only oh, because yeah. not only because yeah. of how he did Metal Mass Assassin, but the other voice, like that purple-haired kid. Hey, fuckface, give me four number five! <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love yeah, Corpse Grinder, too, but yeah. yeah. My number nine, Corpse Grinder. Alright, uh, Hannah, your number nine. Uh, my number five is uh, Carcasses. Nine. Nine. Uh, yeah, nine. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it's Carcass's Jeff Walker. Uh, I'm, I'm, I like Carcass, but more of the older stuff, beginning from Hardwood. But I like his, I like his vocals. 
even though I'm not not the biggest fan of their early work, but I think his I think his voice is great. Yeah. All right, now my to my favorite Carcass album still is to this day Symphonies of Sickness. Mine yeah. is hard work. I like Surgical. I think Surgical Steel is my favorite Carcass album. That's probably my second favorite. I'm w I'm hoping they make a follow up to that because I just want to hear where they're going next. Because Surgical well. Steel was my album of the year for 2013. All right, so well, now for follow. yeah, so now for our number eight. Uh, I'll let Hannah start this one off. Uh, another classic, Chuck Shodino. Oh, he's higher on my list. He's so, higher. Yeah, he would be higher if I would like death more. But I'm, I, I'm sometimes <laughs> listen to them, but they're not my favorite band. But I still appreciate his book. <laughs> It's just I, I'm more more of a black metal fan than I'm a death metal. We're not, so. we're, not, we're not judging. We're not, we're not judging. judging. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, my number eight. I'm going with a classic one myself. Uh, LG Petrov from Entombed. Um, particularly, particularly left hand path and nihilist. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I listen to his vocals, and I feel like if I tried to become a death metal vocalist, I think I would try and go more for an LG Petrov approach, because it's a little a little easier on my throat. And uh, plus, not to mention, though, his approach was almost like taking what he had heard from listening to Bathory in his youth, but making it more brutal and more growly, yeah. which I really, really like. Plus, if you hear the song Bitter Loss, it goes, what the hell? Sound like someone the got hell? killed. Ronald McDonald just got shot. <laughs> but I was going to say that on that song Bitter Loss off of Left Hand Path, I love how he goes from the low growls to the black metal screams and even... His uh, clean voice is showcased slightly on that, but yeah, LG. I mean, recent years with Entombed AD, not the biggest fan. Then again, I'm not into that whole death and roll style. But and he also, and also worked with Mona Marth for the Guardians of Asgard uh, song. Yeah, which I think that was the best he had sounded uh, since even Wolverine Blues, but. Then again, I'm not a huge fan of Wolverine Blues as much as that's kind of blasphemous for some Entombed fans. I like my death metal, not death and roll. But uh, I do love LG. He's my number eight. Uh, Ricky, you're number eight. <laughs> Probably, Arthur, you're going to kill me for this. My number eight is Carl Willis from both. Yeah, Shit! Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's on my list, too. I'm not going to say which number it is, but it's on my list. Or, uh, let's put it uh, as J Chris Jericho would say, he just made the list! Yeah, I mean, the impact, I mean, I mean, for many years, they all, they all throw, they thought they were black metal, they simply they were death metal, but the impact that, that Carl Willits did to the band is very underrated, I mean, Realms of Chaos. Come on. What up? most kind of Realms, Realms of Chaos, chaos. Mercenary. <laughs> Realms of Chaos, Mercenary, War Master. I could go on and on. And as yeah. I said, as I said <laughs> the other day, uh, when we did the other, if there is ever a perfect discography, both thrower has. Even the Fourth Crusade has its moments, but I always go back to the Realms of Chaos. But Carl was, like I said, it's very. Very underrated as one of the vocalists. Should get more credit where credit is due. Alright, uh, Artur. Alright, Artur, your number eight. <clears throat> we already mentioned the, the person. It's Angela Gossel. I mean, we had. We had Doro Pesh, we had Girl School, we had Vixen, we had all these girl bands, but they were more con concentrated on the classic heavy metal, on the classic heavy metal. Classic rock side. You would you would never you never heard maybe the the the, the woman from Holy Moses, but and you would Kitty. never hear a woman no with a growl as powerful as any death metal vocalist. And now 
You have one. Level ten Shania, even though she's an asshole. But that's uh, that's a different that's a different I mean, story. You have Otep Shania. You have you have uh, Alyssa White Bliss is her replacement in in mm -hmm. Arch Enemy. You have Maria Brink, even though I don't like that much the her band and such. But uh -huh. without I mean, Angela Gosso breaking the barriers and having a grow, I never thought that Johan Leva would be Johan who. And now Angela and Alisa will take all the credit. But number eight, Angela Gosso. Alrighty, so uh, did everybody get their number eights in? Just making sure. Yep. yep. Alright, so now we're on to number seven. <coughs> I'll kick this one off. And uh, Hannah may love me even more because I got a German on my list. Mark Grew, formerly of Morgoth. Ooh. I, uh... I got the first album, Cursed, and I was just stunned surprised with how Mark's voice... It's like his voice is like an amalgamation of Chuck and John Tardy combined. While musically, Morgoth's kind of more closer to the band Death, but it sounds like... They sound like a German version of Death, but without sounding like a ripoff, still sounding original, which is hard to do with a lot of bands today. And Mark's voice just... Well, I was just like, whoa. How could someone take what Chuck did and what John did, combine them together to sound like that? I was impressed. Plus the song, Isolated, my favorite Morgoth song, and his voice goes all over the place. So I, I wanted to give him credit because he's quite underrated. So I wanted to just throw a shout-out for him. Uh, Artoria number seven. Nurgle? Uh, Nurgle. I mean, what more can you say about Nurgle that hasn't been already said? Pretty much. With, especially, yes. with his, <laughs> yeah. especially with his career renaissance, with Satanist, uh -huh. and now with I Love You at Your Darkness. But his work, even with Demigod, Satanica, Evangelion, mm -hmm. and, and many others, it's still one of the best. And I'm glad to see that even though Behemoth, <laughs> even though his. His group, Behemoth, has been going through everything and anything in between. They are not afraid to push the boundaries. They wanted to add more symphony. They wanted to add more melody. And the result are the latest are these latest two albums. I mean, Satanist is an epical masterpiece that would go on any top 100 best metal albums of all, or if not, extreme metal albums. And I Love You At Your Darkness may be a bit of a continue, uh, a follow-up to Satanist. Not as good as Satanist, but then again, it is hard to, to do. So, number seven, exactly. Adam Darsky, yeah. also known Nurgle. We, we could basically do an entire episode dedicated to the Satanist. That's how much we love that, right? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and I would bring some of my friends from Spain. They also love him as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Hannah, you're number seven. <laughs> uh, I've got two singers on my number seven because I couldn't decide which one is better. Uh, both are from Finland. The first one is uh, Nilo Sevenen from In Insomnium. Oh. And the second one is Tommy Jotsen from Amorphis and Halata. Uh, yeah, Tommy. The, the reason, yeah, the reasons why they share this is because Nilo from Insomnium, I think he's brilliant on the records, but life... Mm, he isn't as good as on the records, and the thing with Tommy is that he mostly is known for his clean vocals with an amorphous But I love his uh, growth. I think they have so much body and so much character, and I wish he would do that a bit more often. Right. And he still has famous dreadlocks, <laughs> but when he had them, yeah. when, he, when, he, when he had big with it, that yeah. was almost a weapon by itself. Yeah. And, and what I love about him that he sounds live exactly as he does on the record, with both his clean and, and his death vocals. Yeah. All right, Ricky, your number seven. Uh, the my number seven was the bitch side story. And uh, number seven is John Tardy from Obituary. Huh? John Tardy. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Oh no. Don't say it. Don't say <laughs> not again, it. not again. Oh, he already God, said he already yeah. said mine, but I oh 
you only said one of mine, but I did not say when. Continue. <laughs> uh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Welcome to the Horseman Podcast. This is what happens every episode. Pretty much. Yeah. It's like every time we act surprised, even though we should be expecting it at this point. <laughs> uh, I don't mind. I don't mind. I don't mind either. It's just uh, funny. <laughs> yeah. But after, like I said, this, after time performs, I left dance on a bit. I went back to death metal and Obituary is one of the bands bands that we're listening to and Chuck Hardy just I don't know I can't describe this vocals I mean it's left to say with um what's his name um, I, I don't want to say he's equal to Chuck because he's equal to Chuck but he's like mm-hmm. around there alrighty <laughs> now we get to six the number of the beast. Number six. Um, Alright, uh, I'll start this one off again. Um, now, debatably, you could say he's death metal vocalist, but you could also say he's a grindcore vocalist, but he transcends both genres with his influence, and that is the great Barney Greenway, Napalm Death. Especially on Barney Army Mo- Corruption. Sorry. Especially on Harmony Corruption, his voice on that album. I, I, I'm not going to lie, I used to sing some of his stuff off that album outside of my high school. Because, like, I even did the signature roar at the beginning of Vision Conquest out with uh, my best friend outside when there was only, like, 20 people walking outside and people be like, the hell was that? <laughs> so it, it was just funny, but, I mean, Barney, his roar... <laughs> Transcends both death metal and grindcore with his influence, and Napalm Death being one of my favorite bands of all time, and Barney one of my favorite vocalists in extreme metal. So, no question, I got number six, Barney Greenway. <coughs> Ricky, your number six. My number six is David Vincent from Over Angel. On my list, Ultra Madness. Which one? I can't hear him. David Vincent David. from Morbid Angel. I, I will be back because he's lagging again. Uh-oh. Uh, okay. Go ahead, go ahead, Ricky. Like, like I said, Ultras of Madness, their best album to me, their masterpiece. Nothing will ever touch it. Nothing will ever come close to it. And I kind of wish that he would come back to the band because the Venice album was a bit shitty, <laughs> if I can say that. I would agree. I would agree. You can say it. Everyone agrees that more uh, that Ilum Divino whatever was a shit album. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, kind of wish that David Winter would come back and just the presence yeah. on stage, like almost that um vampirish look he had. Nowadays, with his black hair, it's yeah. like I could almost mistake him for Nikki Six sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not not without the cowboy hat. Oh, well, true. <laughs> yeah. Number but yeah, number six, David Vincent. And also, Nikki Six wears platform shoes. David Vincent would not be caught after that. Maybe the dress up party. <laughs> Maybe his previous show. All right. Uh, now that we just went off on a tangent right there. All my fault, as usual. Uh, Hannah, you're number six. <clears throat> uh, my number six is Travis Vine from Cat Decapitation. Mmm. I forgot about him. Damn. I just, I just think his vo- his voice, his voice is scary as fuck. And uh, I love when he, when he goes between his kind of squeaky <laughs> vocals and the growls. Uh, at first. I f- when, the first time when I listened to Cattle Decapitation, I thought they had two vocalists, but then I kind of figured out it was only him. <laughs> <laughs> I think he has a crazy voice. and He does. He's a, he's yeah. a deranged vocalist, and that's what I love about I, Travis. And, and especially on the Anthropocene Extinction, uh, their latest record, fantastic. 
Yeah, and I watched the uh, live version of Force Gender Reassignment, and I couldn't believe how low he could get and how he could go into pig squeals and then go as high as Rob Halford with his high notes. Like, that's insane. And how he uses his tongue, like, ah, when he does his uh, squeals is pretty cool. Yeah, uh, one of my favorite songs actually is the Pacific Grim. I just think it's crazy when he switches from one thing to another. Yeah. All right, Artur, you're number six. <laughs> you, sorry. I got a bit of a problem. You said someone that, trans that is synonymous with both grindcore and death metal. I have someone who is synonymous with both death metal and progressive metal. Mikhail Ackervat from Oakland. I mean... <laughs> Oh, you listen, you listen, especially in his early. <laughs> and, uh, I know, I know. <laughs> if you have one, mine as Ricky already has one. I don't, I don't know if Levi will have another one of mine, but we'll see. But Mikael Ackerfeld, I mean, from his early stages of the the era that I don't like as much, or kids, my arms your hers and. Uh, and I don't, uh, Black Rose Immortal, or uh, I don't remember already, but yeah. once you start to see that he has more fluidity or he has more variety to his voice, listen to Still Life, listen to Blackwater Park, listen to anything beyond. I mean, you want someone that not only transcends death metal, but also prog, but still never forget about the roots, and just like Nurgle, he is always transcending, he's also trying all different things. My number six from Opeth, Mikael Ackerfeld. Alrighty. And I, can, and I can start a bit with my number five because already, all, some of you already mentioned it's David Eason. I mean, who, uh, Morbid Angel was one of the first death metal bands that, that I've ever heard. And yeah, Alters of Madness is awesome. I don't know what what's now the the B, but Covenant is also good. But it's 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 right. I mean, David Vincent is one of the. I won't say that he's as evil as that would be a bit blasphemous. But if you want some of the originators of the of the death metal sound, David Vincent is one of them. Plus, yeah. he felt mm -hmm. he never he never got to sign a record with with any of the American la major labels at the time. He went to England and got signed with Digby's Earache, uh, Earache Records. They were the first American bands to be signed by Digby. So, yeah. number five, David Vincent. All right, uh, Hannah, you're number five. Again, I have two singers on my number five. Uh, both were already mentioned. Both are from Poland. First one is Piotr from uh, Vader. And second one is Zergal. <laughs> um, I, I don't think I have to. I, I think both are brilliant. Especially uh, Piotr Life is amazing. Um, and Nerga is just a beast, in my opinion. Yeah. And Nerga, we already mentioned. <laughs> yeah. Nothing right. more to say about it. <laughs> Yeah, like I said, if I was going to put a Polish vocalist on my list, like I said, it would have been Sauron, the original vocalist of Decapitated. After all, because I love Winds of Creation. Alright, uh, Ricky, you're number five. Alright, my number five is Yakarara from the What? Oh, did... Did you Yipper. do your number six? Number five. Oh, your number Yipper. five, okay. Yeah, my number five is Yakarara from the Hmm. Okay. Then. I, I didn't listen. listen. He said Jeff Becerra from Possessed. Ah. Uh, what? The most, the most, the greatest guy to ever play on a metal show, even on a wheelchair. Yeah. This guy lost his mobility. He's bound to a wheelchair and still plays yeah. the metal gates to this day. You want, um, you want an yeah. example of a, of an over-the-top musician? That's it. But sorry, Rick, I, I took a bit of your spot. Sorry. <laughs> and um, I was going to say that what that, what Kronos did to black metal, I think Jeff did to death metal. Because when Seven Churches, I think, in my mind, is the first 
death metal album, but it wasn't that much of death metal. It's more of a trashier sound. Yeah. And then when, I mean, look at look at Venom. Venom say, of oh, Venom first black metal band, but they have more trashier sound until another band came along, which yeah, I'll explain later. Yeah. Earlier I was talking about with uh, Joe and Lord Worm how they, along with Chris Barnes, pioneered the brutal death metal vocal style. Well, the other pioneer next to Joe, in my opinion, that did the style the best, Frank Mullen, Suffocation. I mean, I listened to his voice on those first three Suffocation albums, Effigy the Forgotten, Breeding to Spawn, and Pierce from Within. How does he get that low and open his mouth wider than some other vocalists that still sound that brutal? It's incredible, and it's a shame he's no longer going to be touring a lot because, you know, he's got a full-time job now, but, hey, Frank Mullen, for what he did for nearly 30 years as a brutal death metal vocalist out of New York, um... The one, the pioneer next to Joe Fichek for brutal death metal vocals. It's, it's... All right, so now our top four, and we're gonna go for number four. I'm gonna kick this one off. A vocalist that uh, discovered last year, thanks to Banger, and I've been growing to love this guy's voice even more. Martin Van Druden, formerly of Pestilence and Asphyx. He did it. He did it. <laughs> um, Levi, that's my number four. Too. I have it on my list too, but as I said, Levi has another vocalist that I'm going to mention. <laughs> that's my number four. That's my number four. So we, we guess we can talk about him at the same time here, Ricky. But yeah, Martin, um, I didn't know that much about Pestilence prior to watching uh, Lockhorns in 2015. I mean, I always heard the name <clears throat> and seen some bits and pieces here and there, but didn't get heavily into them until watching Lock Horns, and then I went back listened to those first two Pestilence albums, Malleus Malficarum, and, and I even got Consuming Impulse, but then as good as that stuff was, his work in Asphyx in my opinion is classic, you know, Last One on Earth being one of my favorite death metal albums of all time. Death Hammer probably in my opinion top five best death metal albums of this decade. It's like... I mean, Death is also a great album, too. Yeah, uh, but Martin Van Druden, like, uh, I would compare him with John Tardy as far as doing the more raspier style. And, and, and the perfect description for Martin Van Druden's voice for anyone out there who's never heard his work in the late 80s era of Pestilence and Asphyx, he sounds like he's getting killed and being tortured. Enough said. Ricky, your thoughts. <laughs> Ricky? Uh, <laughs> but, like I said, I'm my number four. <laughs> I get my number four. It's one of them, Burn, like you said before. And, uh, like I said, it's been Pestilence, Old uh, Top C. Yeah. He never released an album with Bolt Thrower. Nah, he, he was, was just a Bolt touring Thrower. vocalist, yeah. <laughs> If that was what, know. like '97, I think, when he was in Bolt Thrower for that short time. I think it was between I'm not sure. for, between um, uh, Mercenary and Honor Valor Pride. I know that there's one, uh, another one between, but I know that it was between one of those recordings. Yeah, it would have been interesting to hear Martin on a Bolt Thrower album. That would have been an interesting album for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, uh, Hannah, your number four. Uh, my number four is mostly on this list because of this record, October Tides, Rain Without End. Um, one of the only records where Jonas Renske, usually known from Catatonia, did uh, his death metal or death vocals growls, and I wish he would do that more often. Um, I mean, he does backing vocals in Bloodbath and some uh, guttural stuff for Catatonia, but on this record, he does it the entire time, and it's one of my favorite melodic death metal records. I think it's a fucking masterpiece. 
And I only wish he would do it more often. Uh, I, for me, his guttural stuff is perfect. And that's why he's my number four. <coughs> Alright, uh, Arctor. My number four, it is a pair. And some of you already mentioned it. From Dallas, Texas, Niles, Carl Sanders, and Dallas Toller uh, away. I'm putting yeah. both of them because they're a complement to each other. While Carl does the more down tuned, much more of, deeper. Uh, yeah. Yeah, like Carl, Carl's uh, the more Dallas Carl's the more I would say the more brutal death <laughs> style for yeah. sure. Dallas is the more Dallas is the more classical. That's why they complement each other so much. And since his early work with the Catacombs of Necrim Ra until the the late, the latest album where even the gods must even the gods must die. Uh, yeah. He has, always, he has always been one of the mainstays. It is bad that Dallas had to, had to leave. But now the new replacement, I think his name is Greg. He's not, he's not that bad either. I, I kind of enjoy him as well. But now it has become more of a trio. I mean, Trevor, uh, the bass player, which I think his name is uh, Trevor. Um, I'm not sure. But they're both become kind of a, symbi a symbiotic relation to a certain extent. They all perform as well, but always the core of Nile will always be the number four of this list, Carl Sanders and Dallas Tolleweight. And you know, an honorable mention for Nile vocalists that some people forget, for the early stuff, those first two albums, Chief Spires, who was on bass on Catacombs and Black Seeds of Vengeance, he had a good growl too. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, um, now our top three... Uh, all right, uh, Hannah, you start this one. Off. I'm sorry. Oh. Uh, the, other, the new guitarist is Brian. The bass is Brad. I'm, I'm sorry. All right, Hannah, your number three. Today. Um, my number three uh, might be <coughs> a bit unorthodox, but it's a uh, cult of Luna's uh, Johannes Persson. Uh, I love his prose. I think they have so much body, and it kind of works with the music, and I can't wait to uh, hear that live, because people, uh, a lot of concert reviews uh, say that his voice live is even better than on record. Um, I, I will see if that's true in um, June next year at Graph Pop, but I love his voice. And I think it's so mighty and so deep and so dark, and uh, that's why he is on that mm -hmm. number three. All right, uh, my number three, Artur said it earlier, Michael Ackerfeld, Opeth, formerly of Bloodbath. I mean, what can be said about him? I mean, he's another one of my favorite singers of all time, not just for his growls, but his clean stuff, but... I'm, I love his growls, especially when you listen to early Bloodbath, like the Breeding Death EP, Resurrection Through Carnage, even Fathomless Mastery. I don't know, I don't know if it was early Bloodbath was also with uh, Jonas Zelensk from uh, Catatonia as well. Yeah. And of yep. course with early Bloodbath, Dan Swano being the drummer early on before switching to guitar and backing vocals. But yeah, Michael, uh, especially those first two albums... He was kind of going back and forth between like the growls and somewhat black metal style before forming Bloodbath and then going towards the more deeper end of the scale. And it's awesome how he can go just as low as a guy like Frank Mullen or a Lord Worm, but still sound intelligible. And, and it's that always that that is all... Yeah. As I said. <clears throat> all right. Um. Artur, your number three. My number three has already been mentioned as well. The godfather of death metal, Chuck Schuldiner. I mean, death, you, you all, we always say that death was one of the first death metal bands that has ever came out, especially from the Florida death metal scene. Scream Bloody Gore is a, is a classic album, although I already loved Leprosy before it became a fab, as, as, some, as some would say, but Chuck, yeah, he had the, the, the raspy voice. It wasn't too pig squeal. It wasn't too growl. Plus, yeah. he was always a, a, do -it -all, a, do -it, a DIY type of guy. 
he was the one that would go on and and give demo tapes. He would he would do his own his own shows. I mean, number three, Death Death's Chuck Schumer. Yeah, Ricky, you're number three. My number three is Chris Reifert from Autopsy. Oh, right. Forgot about him. Damn it. Ah. Which one? He, a very Chris Reifert autopsy. autopsy. Very, very ah. underrated. Yeah. I yeah. Uh, having more difficulties between Hannah and Ricky is always. I, I, I don't know. I'm losing his voice all of the time. <laughs> or his audio. But like I said, a very, very underrated death metal. And now Ricky's lagging again. Uh, the sh the show ain't complete without any lagging. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I thought about very... putting Chris on my honorable mentions, I'll be honest. Oh, yeah. I mean, very underrated metal vocalist. I mean, severely survival is probably my best, my favorite on top of the record to me. I mean, uh, it, it, yeah. it could be another one. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. if I had to choose my favorite autopsy, I'm going to be Mental Funeral. Because I th also thought his voice got more brutal, not to mention Pioneering Death Doom, which is pretty badass, too. Yeah, and they were uh, they were one of the godfathers of uh, Death Doom also. Maybe yeah, they, they were pioneering both Death Doom mm -hmm. and Death Metal, which is incredible. Yeah. Yeah, and it's yeah, amazing to think that he was the drummer on Scream Bloody Gore, <laughs> which is awesome. All yeah. right. Uh, so, uh, did yeah. everybody get their number threes in? Yeah. I'm thinking we did. Okay. Yep. Oh, God. Top two. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to oh. kick this one off. Uh, my it's number two, time. John Tardy obituary. I mean, if I had to choose, if I had to choose the defining death metal vocal style, it would be John's voice, especially on those first three albums, Slowly We Rot, Cause of Death especially, and The Incomplete, that rasp that I could only dream of trying to do without sounding shitty. And he still keeps yeah. it going to the state. Day. Blah blah. Where am I? Australia. <laughs> and still to this day, he keeps it going, even though he's aged. I mean, he is fifty now, but he still sounds good, especially on that latest album from last year, which I love. So, John Tardy, I salute you, Mister. Uh, Artori, your number dos. Dos. This big motherfucking bastard right here, Martin Van Druen himself. And this one I got from from uh, when Asphyx came during a show. And uh, if I could, it is signed by him, by, by himself. I mean, he was a cool guy. He was a cool guy when I met him. And I told the story that I actually met Asphyx when I was doing some YouTube search and I got into Death Hammer. I thought it wasn't amazing. And not only him, but his, um, his bass player, his bass player Oli was was the one that he recommended another group that he is yeah Alvin I'm sorry that recommend another group that he is which is Grand Supreme Blood Court that's a oh, that's all different story, but you already mentioned why Martin Van Druen is great I mean all that I can say is that he's, he is as good as life as he is on the studio and Martin Van Druen he had passed by pestilence he did touring for Bull Thrower never never released a record with them. But he is one of the he is one of the best. He is only number two here on my list because my number one it is a guy that Ricky already met. <laughs> Speaking of Ricky, your number two. My number two is Thomas Lindenberg for Mathic Yeah. Thomas I mean, Lindenberg. Yeah, I mean probably one of probably one of the most important vocalists in all of extreme metal. I mean, slaughter of the soul. I mean, come on, just fucking Christ! It's like Sam Sam adores that album to death, and I can see why. I've been listening to that album many, many, many times, and the more I listen to it, the more I understand why Sam loves it. It's just perfect. 
and Thomas's yeah. Thomas's I wish I wish Sam would do more yeah. of those classic album of those classic album documentaries, not just stay with Slaughter at the of the soul. Yeah, yeah, no. And like I said, Thomas is very, very. I almost put him at number one, but it was hard to choose between him and my number one. So I gotta give him the honor, the the number two spot. Yeah, and also his work in Lockup, I feel, is quite underrated too. And how those couple songs he sang for on Death Race King by the Crown was really cool too. All right, Hannah, your number dos. Uh, my number zwei has already been mentioned. Michael Ackerfeld. Bloodbath. <laughs> yeah, Bloodbath probably is my favorite death metal band, and I love his vocals on Bloodbath and some of Opus and and the way he switches from the growling to the clean singing and everything in between and the way his music evolves. And it's to his roots, and that's why he is my number spy. Plus, I need to mention this. I have to say, when it comes to watching stage banter, Michael Ackerfeld's the king of stage banter. He yep. cracks me up. Like, <laughs> this next song is about butt fucking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. I love oh, that I story. I love that oh. story Dave Mustaine tells oh, about yeah. that from when they did Gigantor together back in 06. <laughs> Or whenever they play window pane and they say the songs to get chicks. <laughs> <laughs> Although I would recommend more Face of Melinda. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. too. Alright, now it's time for our number ones. And for this one, I'm going to kick it off. I got a tie here from two pioneers. One is a little less obvious. One very obvious. Chuck from Death, for obvious reasons. Plus, Death's my favorite death metal band of all time and number five of all time. But this next one, I'm sure no, I, I was, I am sure nobody thought about this because they considered, because everyone would consider him, well, maybe not everyone. Some people would consider him more influential on black metal, but I feel he was just as inspirational in death metal and kind of helped pioneer it, even though it's a different style. I do like it. Tom Warrior, Hellhammer, Celtic Frost. What? What? It's like I said, I feel he's Didn't. just as ins- inspirational to Death Metal as he was to Black Didn't see Metal. see that one coming. No, nah, that's why I said I went with one that was that's unorthodox. Of left field. If you would say Angle Ripper, uh, Tom Angle Ripper from Sodom, I would believe you more on that. Not yeah. so much with Tom G. Warrior. I mean, I just only have... I just have Tom on my list because especially whenever I hear that song uh, Triumph of Death from the Apocalypse Raids EP with Hellhammer, (laughs) you know, with even doing the screams where he sounds like... He pioneered that style that eventually people like Martin would take where he sounds like he's getting killed but still go very... still go deep. Not deep, deep like a lot of death metal vocalists do but it was pioneering enough in my eyes. And then listening to early Celtic Frost and his grunts on that. Well, like I said, I feel he should get just as much inspiration in the death metal scene as he would get for black metal. Plus, not to mention, without Tom, there would be no John Tardy. There you go. And also Cam Lee. Forgot him to mention on my list. Massacre. Early Massacre. If it wasn't for Tom Moore, we wouldn't have guys like John Tardy, Cam Lee, or Martin Van Drunen. I mean, then again, you wouldn't have black metal vocalists like Corfon or fucking uh, dead people like that. So, yeah, like I said, I wanted to throw one unorthodox in there because I feel Tom was just as pioneering as, say, Chuck or Jeff or John. That's just me, of course. But with Chuck, on the other hand... After that whole Tom Warrior diatribe. Uh, Chuck, I mean, what, is, what else is there to be said about Chuck that hasn't been said already? You know, one of the true pioneers. Not only that, but a great musician. 
sucks he's no longer with us. And even the later albums where he started doing the more screamier stuff, just as powerful as the early stuff. Yeah. So, there you have it. That's my double number one. Uh, one obvious, one not so obvious. All right, Artur, your number one. Ricky already said to a certain way, I mean, Boltrower will always be my death metal, my favorite death metal band of all time, and Carl Willett's one of the greatest vocalists that that ever, ever has. And even though he does, he doesn't, as as you said, doesn't sing like he's being shot at. Even though he sings mostly about war and and stuff like that, he keeps it. He keeps it a bit like Martin, like Mar, uh, like Chuck, uh, like Chuck would do. He keeps it audible, but he never forgets to do that growl, especially on the more uh, lower, uh, bigger occasion. Mercenary may be my favorite album of all time, even though it's a bit more decided, divisive album between the, the fandom. But I would say that Carl Willett did as much with Bolt Thrower as he is doing with Memorium, which is basically Bolt Thrower. 2K, 2K18. Let's put it. Let's put it like this. Because mm-hmm. after Martin Weave's death, Bull Thrower was not was never going to be reformed. Even though there are talks about a Bull Thrower reunion, which I would support it, 100. percent But Memoriam are doing also a great job as well. So number one, Carl Willett's Bull Thrower and Memoriam Ricky. too. All right, Ricky. Well, my number one, it's obvious. I got a lot of death metal. The one and only Chuck. I mean, <laughs> what I'm one more to say about Chuck. I'm mean, he could do anything. He could. He had a progressive side, a thrash side. I mean, the song for Sylvania, for Sylvania, yeah, yeah. speak in the last album. I don't consider that a death metal album. I consider that more of a prop death album. Because if Taco was still been alive, he would have gone that route to the more proggy side. Yeah. Kind of like, kind of like Michael did, Michael did, but they a bit more to the death side. And yeah, plus not to mention with Control Denied, a side band he eventually formed. He even said himself that's what he wanted Death to be like mm-hmm. with a clean vocalist. And mm-hmm. yeah, I could have seen that's a big what if for metal. What would have mm-hmm. happened if Chuck didn't die? I would have said that Control Denied would have been his main band throughout the 2000s. And then similar to Carcass coming back in I Go 7, we could have seen Death come mm-hmm. back and probably release their best album, but mm-hmm. we'll never know. Yeah. Yeah, but the Top of Surveillance and Symbolic to me are probably two of my favorite death albums and death metal albums in general. Yeah. All right, and finally, Hannah, your number one. My number one also has been mentioned Angela Grosso from Arch Enemy. Still think it's amazing that a woman can do that. Um, I think she, in my opinion, she's a lot better than Alyssa. Um, yeah. I mean, I listened to Arch Enemy a lot before I saw who was singing, and I always thought this must be one hell of a dude. And then I saw a picture of her, and I was like, "What?" Was <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. um, and live video. I, yeah, I've never seen her perform live, but whenever I see that uh, live in live in Tokyo video, uh, they they did. Amazing, and uh, I wish she would come back at one at one point and maybe perform together with Alisa. Who knows if it happens? But I think she is. Her voice is fucking insane, especially for being a woman. Yeah. She's not the man. Yeah, yeah but I, mean, I it wish. Would be she it would be amazing. It amazing if the three vocalists. The yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. You're gonna <laughs> yeah, I just wish she, she would come back on stage and not just managing. Yeah. Um, who knows if that will happen, ever happen. Yeah. yeah. And ladies and gentlemen, that That's is a wrap. wrap. That is a wrap yeah. for a tough episode. I have so many others I could have mentioned uh, mm-hmm. that I can't yeah. now, but... Yeah, this was one of the hardest ones for me to do because, I mean, like I said, Death Nails is a genre close to my heart next to Thrash being my favorite. Mm -hmm. Uh, Even though I like Thrash a little more, I do listen to Death Metal more, but I love Thrash more. But, I mean, 
it's so hard. There are so many great vocalists out there that could give recognition to, and but we got also honored some of the legends too, because it's hard to deny their impact and influence. And so that wraps up for episode five. When we come back for episode six, when I don't know, but we're gonna do our best to do our top ten favorite albums of 2018. But I've got a lot of listening to do because I think I've only listened to like eight albums. <laughs> and only like three of them would make my list, so I'm gonna. I got a lot of work to do, so there you go. But uh, thank you all so much for watching, and see you guys later. Keep it in the middle, and we'll see you next time. Keep it see ya. <laughs>